with us your first thoughts on scripture. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another edition of First Thoughts. I'm Damon Jensen Heitman, one of the pastors, First Presbyterian Church, Hastings, Nebraska, joined by... I'm Rose Kep. I'm the Director of Christian Education at First Presbyterian Church. I was really trying to get through it. Yeah, I noticed. It's like, you Damon, didn't... office, here, <laughs> work. <laughs> Gotta get through these things <laughs> before I get distracted. Yeah. And I j- only barely did it. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> What's first thoughts? Do you know what first thoughts is? I do. Where's Greg? What is happening? <laughs> Greg is gone. Okay. His office is empty. Yeah. He's out of here. All right. Until the end of the the summer, and then he'll be back. He put a random painting in my office before I left. Which one? It's Jesus. The laughing one? No, it's kind of smiling. Oh. Just looking at you. It's like a it's a portrait. Okay. Jesus, just smiling. I assume it's Jesus. Which of the disciples do you think painted that portrait? <laughs> mm, the other Judas. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The other That's what one, I would say, sure. Mm-hmm. But seriously, though, yeah. Greg is in Salt Lake City, I think. Yeah. Yes, At I believe the, that. Uh, yeah. PCUSA General Assembly, which, from my understanding, meets every other year. Yes, every two years. And Greg does, um, like, he writes for some. I believe Presbyterian Outlook. That one, yeah, and he writes up wrote, like. What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Articles. Articles. No, but like like a, here's how it went. Recaps. Recaps. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he posted one on Facebook, so if you need to read about it, go for it. Rundowns. <laughs> yes, rundowns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's what he's doing for a week, and then when that week is over, he's flying to meet up with his family for some much-deserved vacation yeah. family time. Does he live tweet any of the sessions? Is he allowed to... I don't know. Live tweet? I'm not on... Twitter. People still live tweet things? I don't know. Hmm. I'm, I haven't been on Twitter in years. I don't, I, yeah. Yeah. A decade and a half. Probably. I was going to say at least 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. so that explains where Greg is and isn't. Right. But what's first thoughts? Well, first thoughts is is this. It's us. <laughs> us together. <laughs> this is first thoughts. thoughts. <laughs> it's the most we ever really have. It's true. <laughs> our first thoughts. Uh, It's a podcast where Mm -hmm. we talk about our first thoughts on the scripture that we're going to be talking about next Sunday. That seems accurate. Sometimes I like to say that we ask questions of the scripture and we allow the scripture to ask questions of us. Sure, sure, sure. And that's what it is. And we usually begin with a word of prayer. Would you like to give the opening prayer or the closing prayer, Rose? Um, I'll give the opening prayer today. Go for it. Um, Loving and gracious God, thank you for this time together, for Damon and I to sit and chat, and thank you for all the people who are listening. Um, I pray that the words that we share would be helpful and maybe even inspirational or educational to those who are listening. Uh, Bless our time together, and it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this Sunday, we are we, we typically would do narrative lectionary things. There is no narrative lectionary during the summer. Correct. So it's just you do whatever you want. Yep. They don't care. No. They don't really care any either way, actually, whether you no. follow. I'm, they've never reported to me, at least, whether or not they care. So no narrative lectionary. Vacation Bible School is finished. It's over, yep. So we're just kind of... Um, <laughs> throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> to, to a certain extent. And uh, I have selected a couple of very brief parables from the Gospel of Matthew for us to reflect on this coming Sunday. So this is Matthew 13, verses 31 through 34. And it reads something like this. This is uh, when it says he here in the first verse, it refers to Jesus. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. And that's 
where we pause. This is where normally I would say, Greg, what do you got? I mean... Let's call him. <laughs> we should. He might answer. <laughs> I don't have my phone. Um, yeah, Jesus is just always riddling. He's just always talkling, talking in, <laughs> in parables. <laughs> Jesus is the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard was writ Oh, no. As in the medication? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus is our medication. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, Jesus is always riddling. Yeah. So. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Rose. Yeah. I've decided to play around uh, with a new sort of format for okay. this section. Great. That I'm calling uh, four or five sections of three. <laughs> okay. Okay. So like four by three or five yeah, by Yeah, or three. maybe five. Okay. Depending. <laughs> Depending on how it turns out. Okay, we're workshopping and it. The first one is three things to know. Okay, three things to know. All right, so three things that might be helpful for folks to know about this passage. Yeah, sure. Right? It's context or or something that's going on yeah. maybe in the passage, right? Uh, this is pretty simple. So I just I have three things. Uh, one, within the narrative of, of the Gospel of Matthew, these parables, uh, they follow the parable of the sower. Okay. Uh, so the sower goes out and s- throws out seed, and some of it lands on good soil, and some of it lands on rocky, and some of it, so on sure. and so forth. And also it follows the parable of the good seed, mm. um, which is someone goes out and they plant a good seed uh, in their, I think, wheat field. Okay. And then they go to bed. <laughs> and But during the night, somebody else comes and oh, plants right. bad seed yeah. in the field. And so the two grow up together and they say, well, do you want us to like pull out all the, all the weeds? And he says, no, leave it. Cause if you pull out the weeds, then you're mm-hmm. going to pull the wheat as well. Right. So just leave it and we'll sort it out at the end. Got it. So that, that may or may not be Cryptic helpful. Cryptic little. Right. And a lot of Matthew's table. stuff is like, with a focus on like the final judgment. Sure. Mm-hmm. I think Matthew is where we also get the sheep and goats. Yeah, I think you're right. Parable, yeah. right? Um, and so those two really fit in well with that. Sure. Another thing that somebody might want to know is Jesus is speaking to the crowds mm-hmm. in this s- section. He's on a boat, uh, but apparently not far enough offshore. Right. He's got his little megaphone. Yeah. He's just shouting out <laughs> to the crowds, preaching yep. at him. Mm-hmm. Sure. And they're all just jammed up around him. Sure. Trying to find out what's going on. Um, It's different than other parable or other sayings of Jesus where it's not given in the context of controversy. Mm, Okay. He's really just speaking with people that agree with him. Okay. He's not engaged in any sort of a debate. Sure. Here. And then the third thing that somebody might want to know is that after this, soon after this, is in the Gospel of Matthew, at least, when Jesus returns to his hometown. Mm, okay. And and kind of picks a fight. Yeah. In his hometown. Yeah. Um, and, and then it doesn't go well. Right. So. And then he has to leave his hometown. Yeah. I, yeah. Or he, like, feels kind of, I don't know. There's something about, he says something about, like, not accepted in my hometown. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. some sort of tension. Yes. Uh, and he's not, he doesn't do any good works there sure. except for he does <laughs> heal a few people <laughs> just a couple yeah but nothing like major right the text reads so okay i don't know what really how helpful that context is i think it's a good place to start to this but yeah. i mean i do think it's interesting like he's speaking to a crowd sometimes when i think of jesus as parables a lot of times i think of like he's talking to one person or one very small group of people mm-hmm. telling them something super specific and i think that we as modern day christians often take those parables and like turn them around and put them right on ourselves yeah so like he tells the rich man like you can't enter the kingdom of heaven unless mm-hmm. whatever and so then like we say, oh, well, that must apply to me too. Because like yeah. Jesus, it's like that one-to-one thing, you know? Yeah. So that's interesting. Like, what does that mean for the parable? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Yeah. I think we also often do a thing, which is very closely related to what mm-hmm. you're saying, of, 
oh, this must be about me. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> because I'm reading it. Mm-hmm. And so it must really be about me. <laughs> Which is kind of absurd. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah. So it's helpful to keep some of the context yeah, in mind. Definitely. So, so definitely. Okay, that was the first section of three. Okay. Right? One of three. <laughs> one one three of one many. of maybe four or five sections sure. <laughs> of three. That's easy to remember, Rose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, three things you noticed. These are just okay. as I was reading, these things caught my attention. Whether that makes sense or not. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Here's what stood out to me. Um, so I'll share one that stood out to me. And then okay. if you have any, you can share okay. as well. Right? So one is, I just I like the verse 34. Um, Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. Just this idea that he has a very particular didactic teaching method. Yeah, he's riddling. <laughs> yeah, <and> it's just, <laughs> that's it. If you can't say it in the form of a parable... It's not worth saying at all. Sure. (laughs) I guess. Which is interesting. Like a lot of times people will say like, we need to find more clarity in our speech and like say what you mean. Mm, Like mm -hmm. let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. Let you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And so for Jesus to just be like, well, here's this really broad kind of statement about mustard seeds and that's interesting. Yeah. And I may or may not explain it. Yeah. Right. Or I may or not explain exactly what I'm thinking. Right. As I'm saying it. Sometimes the disciples will go back to him later. And ask, yeah. What did you mean? What is, what, what's, (laughs) we can't figure it out. (laughs) We've been thinking about it for days. (laughs) That thing you said on the boat. Could you just just tell me? You're driving us crazy. Um, But these ones don't get Mm -mm. an explanation. No. They're just kind of, here's a little, here's a little interesting way of thinking about it. Yeah. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. Yeah. I don't know. It's just something I noticed. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, something I noticed. Well, in Matthew 13, Jesus is talking a lot about seeds and dirt and soil, which mm-hmm. like, I don't know, for our context, that's not something we talk about a lot. I mean, like we live in Nebraska, people are farmers. I do understand like planting your seeds and growing a field, but right. Um, I also don't really know that much about like the the um, economic situation in Jesus's mm-hmm. hometown or uh, the surrounding areas. Like, were there a lot of farmers? I don't know. Is that their way of living? I don't, I don't actually know that. Yeah. And was it, I would assume at the very least that our current system of industrial mm-hmm. farming would be much different than. Oh, sure. I, I assume there was a, a good amount of subsistence farming mm-hmm. um, where you just kind of raising stuff for your own household. Right. But we also get like plenty of other stories of what seem to be more sort of commercial operations. Sure. Um, well, especially, I think especially about like vineyards. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is different, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, I'd, we, are, we live in an agricultural area. How many of us really have experience like, like tending a garden? Mm-hmm. I think is a different... Right. Mm-hmm, yeah. Different question, a different understanding. That actually ties in with one of the things that, that I noticed. Um, oh... No, it doesn't. It it ties in with a different one of the sections. We're not there yet. Let's not not confuse the people. (laughs) (laughs) But thinking about the seeds and the planting and the growing, um, I just think it's interesting that the when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs Mm -hmm. and becomes a tree. Yeah. What do do, what do mustard seeds actually grow into? Is it a shrub? Is it a tree? I have no idea. I don't. I read this a couple Mm. weeks ago and wondered the same thing, and thought I should just look it up, and then I forgot. Yeah, I have heard that a like a mustard plant is Mm -hmm. really not that big. Sure. (laughs) Um, And so. So it seems a little odd. Yeah, and so I. That's a thing that would be one of my remaining questions. Right. Um, Well, how big is a mustard? Plant. Well, like how important Actually. were mustard plants to yeah. the people of the time that it would be mm-hmm. the thing that gets mm-hmm. brought up? Yeah. 
And I, I like this idea of that the goal of a shrub is really to be a tree. Sure. <laughs> sure, because why not? <laughs> and only the greatest of them can become trees. Right. <laughs> and when, do, like, when does a shrub end and a tree begin? Right. When does a shrub become a tree? Somewhere in fig tree size, probably. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> well, like, a bon- like we call bonsai trees trees. 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 Right. Um, That's a good question. I don't know. But like we call like a, a bonsai tree seems a lot like a yew bush to me. Sure. We call a yew bush a yew bush. Right. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Right. I don't and know. I just, <laughs> I just the drew out here. Should we all be aspiring to be trees? Maybe. Am I a shrub? <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to grow up. <laughs> just trying to be a tree. I don't know. I just noticed that. Did you notice yeah. anything else? Um. <laughs> I, nothing else that's like interesting mm-hmm. is coming to mind. I've got one more. Okay, go ahead. I find it interesting that in these two parables, both men and women are agents of the kingdom of heaven. Oh, sure. Right. In the first, uh, someone took and sowed in his field. Yeah. So we find out that that's a guy. And then in the second, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in. With three measures of flour. Yeah. Um, and so we get two specific parables about the kingdom of God growing or being spread. Mm-hmm. And both men and women play a critical role yeah. in that taking place. So I didn't notice that. That was just another thing that I noticed. You ready for the next? Uh, group of three? Yeah. I am. Mm-hmm. It's three things that this reminds you of. Does this remind you of anything, Rose? It does, actually. Yeah. Um. My first thought was just like, when we have that small little idea, you know, like sometimes we have ideas mm-hmm. and we, we tend to doubt ourselves and we tend to listen to the voices of doubt and fear. And we think like, oh, this is just like a dumb little thing in my head. I'm not going to, I'm not going to run with it. But like the idea that a tiny mushroom or a tiny mustard, not mushroom, mustard seed mm-hmm. <laughs> could become a shrub tree. Like <laughs> yeah. sometimes you have an idea and you need to run with it. And maybe it's even, you know, we've been talking about the voice of the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit encouraging you mm-hmm. to do that little thing. Mm-hmm. That was the first thing that came to my mm-hmm. head. Yeah. One of mine is, is very similar. It reminds me of the song. It only takes a spark. Okay. Uh, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. Yeah. And soon all those around are warmed up and it's glowing. Sure. Which is interesting. Should have used that one for VBS. <laughs> for oh, camp. we had enough going on. That's true. We didn't need it. <laughs> We didn't need to uh, encourage children to start fires in the building either. Mm-hmm. You know. But that same sort of idea. Mm-hmm. Of, right? Just you start with a very small, small thing. thing. Yeah. And, and Absolutely. see what happens after yeah. that. It also reminds me of, uh, it reminds me of the Karate Kid. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. <laughs> Here's why. In the movie Karate Kid, if I'm remembering it correctly, the main character is this sort of... Uh, feels weak okay in some way whether or not he really is i i don't know but like he's feel weak he feels weak i think others perceive him as being he's kind of a scrawny kid yeah Yeah. easily pushed around um but then he becomes Mm -hmm. the the great karate tree (laughs) the great karate shrub (laughs) (laughs) through the you know through the tutelage and is through the tutelage of Mr. Miyagi. Sure. And his own hard work. Like so and I think that there's probably lots of books or movies that have this basic Yeah, plot, sure. Right? Mm. The the thing that no one expected to be great mm-hmm. turns out to be turns great. Out to be great. In yeah. In some way. Or has the idea mm-hmm. that that they needed to solve the problem or to Sure. Whatever sure. it is that they're working on. So it reminded me of uh, of the karate kid. I like it. Mm-hmm. Whatever his name was. I have only ever seen that movie in Spanish. So. Really? Yeah. We watched it in Spanish class in high school and I've never seen it in English. So (laughs) I don't actually really know what that movie is about. (laughs) I mean, I think you probably. Uh, I mean, like I got the gist of it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But. I could not you tell you what his name was. probably watch that movie without any of the dialogue. Is it Daniel? Was that his name? I think so, yeah. Because they call him Daniel's son. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all I, that part was in English. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think you could watch that movie without any of the sound on. And get it. And still, yeah, and easily know what's sure. happening. <laughs> yeah, it's not that complicated. No. <laughs> it's really not. 
Uh, one uh. other quick thing that it reminded me of, just the process of baking um, or or actually brewing. Mm-hmm. Um, that, yeah, just and just the way that that works, that a small amount of yeast can really can have a big effect, right? Sure. Um, and also that you really don't want to add too much yeast. Sure. Uh, too much yeast causes a problem, which... So what would... What's the yeast in real in real time? We're going to decipher Jesus' parables. Oh, uh, what do I think that the when Jesus says the yeast, what's he actually referencing? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it could be different things depending mm-hmm. on your circumstances, but what could a yeast be? Well, I suppose, I mean, it could be something as simple as, Okay, even this past week, we had vacation Bible school. Yeah. You had groups of kids going mm-hmm. around with adults or other um, sort of student volunteers, mm-hmm. right? And any one of those classrooms that they visited could yeah. have been some sort of a yeast. Right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Like, provided them some sort of lesson or information. To help them grow and expand yeah. their knowledge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that'll maybe, you know, that'll stick with them and sort of become a way that they sort of start to see the world around themselves. Sure. Through it. Um, I mean, I can, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be a parable, lessons from scripture, anything. Yeah. So. Okay. I think we're ready for the next Section of three. Or do you, no, you have more. Well, I jotted down some notes. Yeah, what do you um, got? We're still in the, this is three mm-hmm. things it reminds you of mm-hmm. section. Okay. Um, so with the with the mustard seed parable, um, something I jotted down was just the word children. <laughs> I wrote that down Did too. Did you? Yeah. Children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because children, they are so small, but they really do, like, I mean, Jesus even says, like, their faith is just different. And mm-hmm. I think that, like, children can be, like, mustard seeds, but also, like, somehow, I don't know, they, like, help us think different, too. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, I, yeah, I, I totally agree, right? And when a, when a kid says something and you think, well, that's, you know, that's not the commonly accepted way of looking at right. that. But what you said makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, And, okay, yeah, I never thought about it that way, but yeah, maybe green and red are friends. It's true. (laughs) Maybe they are. I mean, Christmas, hello. (laughs) Maybe they're not just different wavelengths of light. Yeah. Um, (laughs) That sort of, that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. I also think about um, just Teresa Kennedy. Okay, sure. From last week. Yeah. Just, Just one person. Yeah. But... Just sort of the spark of energy that uh-huh. she, well, and I spent all my work working right, with her. Right, with her, yeah. So I'm sure that others did this as well, sure. in their, as well in their stations. But yeah, just the, the energy that she brought just kind of, when kids come would come in mm-hmm. to the music station, yeah. once they started interacting with her, the, they would change. Yeah. In some way. They're kind of like the little birdies yeah. in the branches of the... Of the mustard tree. Of the shrub, of the shrub, shrub tree. Shrubbery. The shrubbery. Is that where that word comes from? <laughs> I don't know what a shrubbery is, actually. <laughs> it's just like is, a group of shrubs. Is that what it... I mean, that's yeah. what I would guess, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. The other note that I wrote down was actually something I thought about when you were talking about a different parable that is not here. So we'll talk about that next time, that we talk <laughs> about a different parable. Okay. My brain enough. went on a tangent, and I wrote the tangent down, and then realized it had nothing to do with this <laughs> scripture. <laughs> What are you going to do? So. Okay. So we, should we move on to the next section? Let's do it. All right. Three things. Uh, no. Let's do. Okay. This is the this is the maybe fifth section that I'm going to go favorite, to now. So. It's not. Okay. Right? It's three questions you have. Three questions I have. For, for the text. I see you have notes. So mm-hmm. you can go first. Yeah. I'll start with one. Okay. And that is... Uh, who is this someone, right? So in verse 31, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field, right? Okay. Just who is this someone? Like, is it, like, is the parable, like, you mean in the parable, is it like a human or is it like God? 
Is that what you're asking? Or yeah. just like who is and yeah. more in general? Could be that. Um, yeah. Or if we assume that it's, that it is a human, sure. right? Who are like, why? Who why? are they? Yeah. Why are they sowing sure. a mustard seed? Right. In their field. One singular yeah. mustard What's seed. What's right. motivating them to do this? Are they just are they tired of having bland, boring meals? Sure. And they're hoping to be able to kick it up a little bit. It's a in mustard seed. Six months. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so that's one question okay. that I have. Another question that I have. What what would you only plant one seed? It depends if it's going to be a bush or a tree, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I would think you would want to plant at least a few seeds. Right. So that at least one of them would take mm-hmm. off. Yeah. But the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. Right. And I also just wonder about how intentional are are they being when right. they're sowing. Are right. they just like, oh, I got to see it, throw it out there, see what happens. Right. Um, or are they have they really thought this through? Yeah. That's when a good point. Go to plant the seed or not, right? Good question. And then my last question is, do you want a tree in your field? That's a really good question. <laughs> because trees like soak up all the water. Right. And trees are in the way when yeah. you're trying to like. Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot of fields what around here. What kind of field is it? I don't have trees. To- right. Not in the middle of them. <laughs> no. No. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Which also like, kind of makes me like, did this person really fully know what they were doing? Sure. Or could they have possibly fully anticipated the the end result? Yeah. Of planting this that's a seed, good point. Right. Well, so where my mind went with that was kind of back to this question of who is someone. So I'm I read a lot. And so sometimes I read things and they stick in my brain and I don't remember where I read it. Yeah. So I don't know where this information came from. Sorry. Okay. Um, but I was listening to someone's commentary about the Garden of Eden. And mm-hmm. they were talking about how um, perhaps when the world was created, it wasn't that the whole world was all in perfection, but that it was that there was still some chaos and that Adam and Eve were were told to bring order to the chaos. That mm-hmm. was their job. And that mm-hmm. is our job as humans is mm-hmm. to help bring order. That's what people like puzzling. People like taking things apart and fixing them. People sure. like to bring order. We organize our homes, our yards, our, you know, mm-hmm. we bring order. And so maybe it's that the someone was in fact Jesus and planting a mustard seed in his field was his space where he's trying to bring order. And by planting a mustard mm. seed, he's, providing a space for animals to then come. This is a really big thought. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I don't know, just mm-hmm. something in my head. Yeah, it's like yeah, cuz you could read that someone because it's an unnamed mm-hmm. very loosely defined character. Sure. Yeah, you could read it in lots of different lots ways, ways, right? You yeah. could read it as <clears throat> we as human beings. Mm-hmm. You know, when we go out and like and we are maybe trying to really intentionally plant seeds of the kingdom of God. Sure. Yeah. Do we really know what we're doing? <laughs> Do <laughs> we not? <laughs> yeah. Did we see the, possibly see all of the ramifications of it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Or yeah. Could it represent Jesus himself and the work that he sees himself yeah. doing in some way, shape or form, trying to bring order yeah, mm-hmm. to the chaos around him? So Yeah. Could be lots of different, lots of different ways. Yeah. Right. Anything else for that section? No, I think I'm good on that section. Okay. Of one last section. Okay. Uh, of our three or four sections of three. Oh no, four, four or five, or five sections, sections of, of three. three. Three to five sections of three. <laughs> three things. This is three things a person could do with this text. Come. I could fold it into a paper airplane. <laughs> one. One. <laughs> Done. Got it. We're on our way. All right. One is I have the first one of mine just stated as a question. Okay. Right? Which is, who is in your branches? Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, let's say that you, that we are to be sort of the, the seed. That sure. grows in sure. some way, shape, or form. Jesus right? is the planter. We are the mustard seed. Yeah. We grow. Mm-hmm. 
Now we have yeah. branches. And the birds of the air. Mm-hmm. Now those are ground birds. No. <laughs> Gross. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> the birds of the air come and build nests in it, right? Yeah. So just, yeah. I think you could use this as a way of, of exploring, yeah, who is in your branches, yeah. right? Who are you providing shelter for or yeah. nourishment or encouragement um, or challenge for or and who might you be right. called yeah. to to help provide that for. So that's one thing I like that it. a person could do with this passage. Do you have any other things that a person could do with this passage? You do another you one. I'm thinking. You want me just to rifle through mine? Yeah, okay. You can. Mm-hmm. I didn't have quite as much time to think through this as you did. Yeah. No, so. I know. <laughs> it's all good. Um, the second thing is... Another question, I suppose, which you could use this as a way of exploring who or what is your leavening. Oh, sure. Right? Okay. Like, yeah. Like what are the things or people mm-hmm. that sort of help you to encounter the word of God mm-hmm. or the spirit of Christ or whomever that sort of helps to provide that leaven yeah. for your own life or practices, right? Yeah. It might be. Um, and you could maybe sort of explore a couple of spiritual practices yeah. related to this as well, you know, just like a simple daily scripture reading mm-hmm. exercise, right? Yeah. That, that sort of thing. So who or what is your leaven? Leavening? I... Leavening agent. That, yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> right. Okay, and then I have one more. Okay. Uh, and, and now I'm back to the mustard seed. It's, uh, I just wrote, raising mustard. <laughs> <laughs> raising mustard. <laughs> but it goes, I think, back to the converse, to what we were talking about earlier about who is the sower and like, what is the work that they are doing mm-hmm. to, to raise them. To sure. raise this Because trees, I mean, they right. do, shr- shrub trees do sometimes grow up on their own, mm-hmm. but not always well. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And if, if this person has put this seed in their field, I presume that they've done it for a particular reason. Sure. And then, yeah, how do we, how do we raise mustard plants? Sure. As a community of faith. Yeah. Right? Um, and mustard plants of all ages. Right. Right. Like how do we encourage everybody to put down deeper roots mm-hmm. or to, you know, grow from a shrub to a to a tree? To a tree. <laughs> it can be done apparently. Yeah. So that would be another. Sure. Thing, something that somebody could do with this passage. Are you still thinking? Well, I just a question came to my mind. Mm-hmm. Um because we've been talking about the mustard seed as being like a person. Right? Like we keep comparing yeah. it to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but the text does say the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Right. So that is an avenue that we have not really explored not much. Really, yeah. Because what does um, that mean? Well, what I've heard, um, what we teach to children usually mm-hmm. is that a mustard seed is like such a small thing and it can grow to be somewhat of a larger thing, mm-hmm. maybe a grown-up tree. <laughs> sure, we don't know. Sure. We don't actually know. It grows to be much bigger uh-huh. than what it is. Um, so what we tell the kids usually is um, that God's kingdom is like that, that God's kingdom, maybe it can start with like, like we do one small thing, but then that helps to bring on more sure. positive things yeah. that grow the kingdom of heaven. So that mm-hmm. is something else you could do with this text. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I also wrote down a bonus one. Oh, sweet. This is based off of something that you were saying earlier. Okay. But I just wrote it as the power of of trying. Oh, yeah. Right? Or the power of just trying it out. If you just try to become a tree, (laughs) you will just become a tree eventually. Like, you'll get there. Yeah. (laughs) It'll be fun. (laughs) Yeah. But you've got an idea for a thing Mm -hmm. or for, like, a conversation that you feel that you need to have or want to have with someone. Right. And or a text that you need to send us, you know, whatever it is. Right. And the power of just uh, just trying it out. Yeah. Just put it in the ground and see what happens. Right. Right. Um, And maybe nothing will come from it. Yeah. That's probably about the worst thing that's going to happen. Right. Is nothing comes from it. Right. Um, But also maybe it might sprout. Yeah. 
and become something more than what it was yeah. before. So, And I think that there's some hope in this parable of like that the little things can become bigger things. Yeah. Like that your little text message to somebody that you was on your mind could become something bigger. And there's like hope in that. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else? I'm, I Did think I'm. we cover I'm, it all? Yeah. All right. I got it. Time for a closing prayer then, I think. All right. That's you. Okay. That's, that's on me. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for your word and for the ways, the many ways that it comes to us and helps to encourage our faith, deepen our faith, uh, connect us to you and to your spirit. Uh, Thank you for the small things that we have come across that have the small things of your spirit that have grown within us, that have helped us to become your disciples, help us to continue to become your disciples and continue to encourage others as well. In your gracious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And that's all we have to say about that. Mm Mm-hmm. Now we have some announcements. Announcements. Are you going to sing the song again? Uh, They didn't hear it last (laughs) week. They didn't because it just disappeared into the ether. Maybe it disappeared because of the song. It was. Oh, in that case. (laughs) Don't sing it. No, for safety's sake, we won't be singing it. Okay, Uh, it's the summer. Vacation Bible School is over. It is all finished. It is wrapped up. So we don't need to announce that anymore. Also, the water park night is over. It's over. It's finished. Yep. It's wrapped up in a towel and drying on the line. Yep. Okay. So we are now entering uh, what I think we can think of as the second phase of summer. Yes. Right? It's, Part two. Yes. It's July, and we are going to uh, we'll have a, an addition to our worship schedule Correct. moving forward. Starting this Sunday, July 7th. We will have worship in Alexander Park Correct. at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Okay. I should write that down. <laughs> I'll be there. Don't worry. Okay. 9 a.m. Yep. <laughs> and, then, and then we will also have the 1030 service right. in the sanctuary. So from July 7th through August 18th, we'll have two services, one at 9 a.m. in Alexander Park, one at 1030 in the sanctuary as per usual. Mm -hmm. This coming Sunday, we have an interesting thing happening. So our choral director, Brett Epperson, has contacted four local composers Mm -hmm. and asked them to create musical settings of... um, Like poetry. poem, or it could be a piece of scripture. Yeah, something... And so they've been dutifully working on this, Mm -hmm. and those will be shared during the course of worship on this Sunday. And that, I believe, to be happening at both the 9 and the 10.30 service. So so that is uh, Local Composers Sunday. That's the catchy name that we're giving it. (laughs) Also Sunday, we have our um, July Elementary Movie Club. So if you are or have a student who is going into kindergarten through fifth grade. We're meeting here at the church at five o'clock on Sunday night to watch a movie about semi-aquatic birds. <laughs> semi-aquatic birds. Oh, I already heard this announcement. Yeah, but they didn't. Yeah. Because you didn't. Now I know. They got lost. Now I've figured out the riddle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just riddling all the time. Yeah. <laughs> We're just out here riddling. Every day I'm riddling. Yep. <laughs> Okay, what else? Uh, uh, we also are continuing our youth group yep. meetings, gatherings, hangout times on Thursdays at 3 o'clock. We probably won't meet this Thursday considering it's the 4th of July. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, probably we won't. Uh, so not this week, but next week, junior high, high school students yep. can come and hang out from 3 to 5 on Thursdays. And I think that is pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, so, all right, well then, with all of those things said and done, until next time, toodaloo.